Hey, how's it going? This is Pian from Extraordinary Imaging. So today I just want to talk about a very simple method to make your astro images pop. It's called the Orton Diffusion Method. And essentially what we're going to do is add a Gaussian blur layer on top of the image and add a high pass sharpening filter as well. And what this is going to give us is an ethereal glow over the image and while maintaining the fine details in both in the foreground and the night sky. And this is the final processing method that I add to my images before I export them for print or for web. Uh, and I find that it adds an ethereal glow and it maintains this really fine detail as well. So it's a, it's a very quick method that's done in Photoshop and Lightroom uh, and takes only about five minutes or so to, to add this professional touch to your images. Uh, so let's jump into Lightroom and let's get started. All right, the image that we'll be working on today is an, an image that I took at a Lancelin Lens Sand Dunes, I believe in 2017. Um, and this is a 48 image panorama taken with a Nikon D750 and a Sigma 24 millimeter F1.4 art lens. Um, this is taken at about 7.30 p.m. that night during the heart of winter. Um, so the sun had just set about an hour, an hour and a half before this image was taken. Um, so there is a lot of uh, air glow going on in the image, as you can see right in the center, the stripes coming out from the center of the image. Um, and the big bulb of uh, light coming from the middle, that's actually the uh, city lights of Perth, uh, Perth city, which is about 150 kilometers south of this location. So this area is just dark enough to take a clear image of the Milky Way uh, and get a full panorama of the Milky Way as well. Um, so I've pre-adjusted all of these uh, I pre-adjusted this image in Lightroom already and all my settings are on the right hand side um, and I'm just going to open it in Photoshop and we'll start doing the Autumn Diffusion effect. So we're just going to open it, uh, edit in Photoshop 2020 uh, and we're going to use the Lightroom adjustments as well. We're going to edit the copy with the Lightroom adjustments. All right, once the image is in Photoshop, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is unlock the bottom layer and we're gonna duplicate this layer uh, four times. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work on each layer separately uh, and each layer will be doing a different part of this entire effect. So one layer is gonna be the blur layer, one layer is gonna be the sharpening layer and there's gonna be a saturation layer and a contrast layer as well. Yeah, so what I'll do first is hide all the layers that I'm not going to use. I'm going to start with the bottom layer. So the base layer, layer zero in this case, is going to be the base layer where we're not going to touch at all. We're going to leave that as is, uh, and we're going to build upon that layer. So we're going to start with layer zero copy. Um, and the first step, what we're going to do is add a mild blur on it, a Gaussian blur. Uh, and I tend to put it very, very low. Um, with, a, with such a large panorama, I tend to put it about seven. Um, seven pixels across. If you're gonna do a single image, you wanna go significantly lower than that. Press OK, and it's gonna just add this Gaussian blur layer. Um, and as we can see, if we're gonna, if we're gonna zoom in, you can see that the image is blurred out now, uh, but it's totally fine, because that's, that's the effect that we want. Next up, I'm gonna change this to a black and white color scheme. I'm gonna adjust these um, sliders here where we can adjust each individual color uh, and this just adds, adds or takes away luminosity of that particular color. Uh, so you don't have to adjust this part here totally accurately. Uh, and the, what I'm trying to achieve uh, in this section here is to create a totally flat image, uh, as flat as possible um, with just looking at the lu luminosity tones. Okay, that looks all right. And now I'm going to add a, a big S bend for contrast on it uh, to the point where the highlights start to clip and then I pull it down a little bit and give it a roll off at the top. That's looking all right. So I'm gonna group these, uh, this layer plus the effects that I put on it in a single group and I'm gonna put that at about 15% uh, opacity. So if you can see the slight difference in um, contrast now in this image, with this is without, this with it, with it on. So you can see a slight contrast bump in this uh, with adding this black and white layer underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna hide this, I'm gonna hide this layer. I'm gonna start working on the next layer. And this layer is gonna be our saturation and color layer. So the same thing, I'm gonna add a small Gaussian blur to it, a about seven again. 
And next up, I'm gonna uh, up the contrast with this S curve again. And I'm gonna push, same thing with the black layer. I'm gonna push this very, as high as possible without clipping uh, the highlights. So that looks all right. Uh, it, so this image, as you can see, right, at this moment looks totally crap. But this is gonna be a subtle effect that we're gonna add into the image. So we're gonna put the opacity of this particular layer really low. Um, so the set, besides upping the contrast of this with an, with an S curve, I'm gonna up the vibrance and saturation sliders as well, as much as possible. That looks all right. I'm gonna group these things, uh, these layers together again, and I'm gonna blend it in at a, uh, with a low opacity. So about 15 again. So this is with the effect on for, for the saturation and color layer. It's with it off. On, off. So this with, with the saturation layer on and with the contrast layer on as well. So I'll take both of them away and I'll put it back on again. So it's a very subtle effect, but it, uh, it adds more dynamic range to the entire image. It makes the dark parts of the image darker, the bright parts of the image brighter. Um, and you just get this whole very pleasing, uh, a highly saturated, high contrast image. All right, so I'm gonna hide those two layers now. And this is where the Orton Diffusion method comes in. So I'm, for the next layer, I'm going to add another Gaussian blur. This time I'm gonna add, uh, put it all the way up to about 36 pixels across. Um, and there's no really set uh, number of pixels that you're supposed to use. There's no set number that you're supposed to use. It's mainly just looking at the image and saying that, yep, that looks really, really blurred now. <laughs> and we're gonna blend it in. So okay, at 36, that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna put a very slight um, uh, con sorry, exposure boost to this. I'm gonna just up the tone curve and just pull a little bit up in the shadows. And that's about it. I'm gonna group uh, the layer and the effect together and put it at about 25% opacity. So let's zoom in a little bit and you can see that this is with the effect on and off. On and off. So all you see is just, it blurs out um, all the distracting details uh, and adds a diffuse glow over the entire image. So I'm gonna add in each layer one by one now. So this is the uh, Autumn Diffusion layer. This is a saturation layer. And this is the contrast layer. And now this is with everything off. And it's on again. We're gonna zoom in and you can see that a lot of the image becomes quite blurred out because we did add several layers of Gaussian blur on it. Um, so the final layer on top, we want to add as a sharpening layer. What we're gonna do is select that layer, go to filter, other, and go to high pass. When to high pass, we're gonna zoom in on a particular section of the image that we want to be ultra sharp. So in this case is the little figure here. And all the parts coming through as white in this section here uh, will be sharpened. Anything that's left as gray or black will not be sharpened. So in this case, I'm gonna up uh, the pixel radius slightly just to make sure that um, the sections that I want to be sharpened are being um, shown here. So that looks all right, I'm gonna press okay. I'm just gonna add this uh, high pass filter and you can see the entire image is uh, all totally grayed out. What we do is just go to the blend mode and we're gonna go to soft light. All right, so now I'm gonna turn that sharpening layer off and on again. Off and on again. So if we zoom in a little bit more uh, closely to about one to one or so, um, it's close enough. We're gonna see is this is the sharpening layer on, and this is with it off. It's on and off. On and off. All right, and now this is with all layers off except this is the original image where we started from, and this is with all the effects that we've just put on. 
Let's zoom out. So this is the original image. And this is with all the images, all the effects put on. So it's pretty, looking pretty good to me. I'm going to merge all these together, flatten this image. And I'm going to close it and start and bring reimport it back into Lightroom. All right, now the image is back in Lightroom. I'm just going to add a very minor uh, vignette to it, just to add that little fishing touch and draw the uh, the viewer's eyes more towards the middle of the frame. So that's looking about right. And add some feather to it. So it's looking pretty good to me now. I'm just gonna export this image. And what we're gonna do is compare both images side by side and have a look at them at, um, on the monitor and just see if we can spot, we can actually see the difference in this effect. Okay. So this is the image without the autumn diffusion effect on, and this is with it on. This is off, and this is on. You can see that the entire image has a very diffuse glow all over it, uh, but if we zoom in, it maintains all the sharp details in the foreground and both the sky as well. So that's the autumn diffusion uh, method, and I hope you can use it in some of your images as well because I find that this is the particular effect that gives um, the overall image a professional look to it. So I'll give it a shot as well, it's very simple. All you need is just several layers in Photoshop, um, a Gaussian layer and a sharpening layer as well. So if you like this video or if you found this useful, give us a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe. This is Pian from Extraordinary Imaging signing out. Thanks for watching.